The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO, we are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. And welcome to this new teaching session. I am Eke Bowes and a teacher of analytical chemistry. So together, we are going to be treating analytical chemistry with the Form 6 class. And before we start the lesson of today, I left with you an assignment in our previous class and I believe you must have done it. So let's go ahead and we look at the correction. The assignment goes thus. To 250 milliliter of nickel sulfate solution, 10 milliliter of a barium chloride solution are added and a precipitate is formed. After filtering and drying, 0.3400 gram of the precipitate is obtained. Question number one, what is the precipitate? And question number two, determine the mass of sulfate ion contained in the precipitate. So my dear students, to identify the precipitate, the first thing we need to do is to write the equations, the various equations that come into being. The first thing, we write the dissolution equation of the first substance, which is nickel sulfate, this is what we are going to have nickel ion and sulfate ion. When barium ion dissociates, it produces barium ion and chloride ion. Now, when these two react, when the barium ion reacts with the sulfate ion, they are now going to form a precipitate. And the name of this precipitate is barium chloride. Therefore, the precipitate form is barium chloride. Give it a tick if you have it correct. The next one, we have the answer to calculate the mass of sulfate ion contained in the precipitate. Of course, we know, we, need, we know that the first thing we need to do is to calculate the gravimetric factor. Now, the gravimetric factor here is the molar mass of the sulfate ion uh, divided by the mass of the molar mass of the precipitate. And remember, we say that we said that the precipitate is barium sulfate. And in barium sulfate, how many atoms of so how many molecules of sulfate ion do we have? Only one. That is why the A here is one. And here the precipitate we have only one as a stoichiometric coefficient. Reason why we have not put the one all over one. When you perform that operation, you are going to have a gravimetric factor of 0 0.4114. Step number two, after calculating the gravimetric factor, you now apply the relation of direct type gravimetric titration, which is the mass of the unknown is equal to the mass of the precipitate times the gravimetric factor of the unknown in the precipitate. And that will give you 0 0.34 times 0 0.4114. It will give now, you obtain the mass of sulfate ion in the sample to be 0 0.1399 gram. Today, we are going to we'll continue with our topic on gravimetric titration. <laughs> We are starting a new lesson, which is lesson number nine. 
And lesson number nine is the second part of gravimetric analysis. And the second part here, of course, is indirect gravimetric titration. Last time we saw direct gravimetric titration. This time around, we'll continue with indirect gravimetric titration. And the lesson is structured as follows. The learning competence, the prerequisites, the professional situation, the learning activities, the, the summary of the learning activities, I will now use app application exercises to understand better and will separate with assignment. As a learning activity, as a learning competence, my dear learners, you are supposed to be able to, by the end of the lesson, describe the principle of the indirect gravimetric titration. And as prerequisite, you are supposed to, uh, before starting this, you are supposed to have a good mastery of gravimetric factor. You are quite supposed to have a good mastery of the chemical equilibrium. Professional situation. We have here a container, and in this container we will mix potassium chloride and magnesium chloride. And the task we have at hand is to determine the percentage by mass of each constituent in the mixture. Learning activity. We should know here that there are some pairs of substances difficult to separate one from the other and that can be indirectly separated if they fulfill the following condition. <coughs> Pardon me. They are telling us here that we have some substances that when you mix them together, it is very difficult to separate them, to separate one from the other. But notwithstanding, they can still be separated if they fulfill one of the following conditions. And the method of separation is by indirect, they can be indirectly separated by fulfilling one of the following conditions. The first condition is that they, sh they should both be obtained at Q state. When they can be obtained at Q state for measurement, therefore, they can be I indirectly isolated. The next condition is if they have a common element, that is the common or the common ion, which can be converted into a simpler product for weighing. If both substances have a common element or a common ion, and this ion can be converted into a pure substance for weighing, therefore it fulfills the condition for separation. And the third condition here is if they can be converted into a mixture of other pure compounds, generally as a precipitate, and the compound are taken for measurement, therefore it means that these two substances can be separated by the indirect method. So these are basically the three conditions to fulfill in order to separate substances that are difficult to separate using the direct gravimetric analysis. And reason we have now the new method called the indirect gravimetric analysis. Now let's take this example, quick example one, to understand what we have said. They said that sodium and potassium can be obtained together in the form of their solid chloride. That is sodium chloride and potassium chloride, which are weight. This uh, chloride mixed in a solution are converted to sodium silver, uh, to, so, uh, to silver chloride whose mass, is, whose mass is recorded. And now, you see that this, this example here, it already fulfills the first two conditions, which is the three conditions. You can see that, first of all, their compounds have the same element, which is chloride. They have the same element, and the two compounds can be transformed into other substances which are 
of other substances for whey, which are sodium chloride and potassium chloride. And equally, when we mix those substances together, we can obtain a precipitate which can be used for weighing. So those are the conditions necessary for us to talk of indirect gravimetry analysis or gravimetry titration. Now the calculations in such an example are done as follows. Here, yeah, we are going to consider, since we have potassium chloride on one hand and sodium chloride on the other hand, we we'll consider X to be the mass of the first compound and Y the mass of the second compound. Remember, these masses generally are not known. But you have the combined mass, which is the compound itself. We we'll call the mass of the substance of the compound or of the solution Z. So Z equals to, since it's a mixture, the mass of the mixture is generally known. We we'll call it Z. The Z now is a mixture of chloride of these two substances and having two different masses. That is X and Y. The mass of the mixture, therefore, is the sum of the mass of the individual components. By applying the appropriate gravimetric factors, we have first, first of all, the gravimetric factor of the precipitate obtained from sodium chloride will be the ma molar mass of the precipitate divided by the molar mass of sodium chloride. And with that, we cannot calculate the mass of the, pre of the precipitate obtained from sodium chloride, giving us the gravimetry. This is what we saw using the direct gravimetry analysis. We will have the gravimetry factor of the precipitate all over the unknown times the mass of the unknown. We will do the same thing with the potassium chloride and we have now a molar mass, a mass of the, silk, the precipitate in the potassium chloride to be that. When we have this, when we have now calculated the mass of the precipitate in the first substance and the mass of the precipitate from the second substance, we cannot determine the total mass of the precipitate, that is the mass of the precipitate from both substances, giving us the mass of the precipitate from the first substance plus the mass of the precipitate from the second substance. <coughs> Example 2. A known mass of mixture of sodium chloride and potassium chloride can be treated with sulfuric acid. In this case, we have a sulfuric acid. After drying, the mixture of sulfate, that is sodium sulfate and potassium sulfate, are obtained are weighed. You see that we have transformed the two substances into a into sulfate, which can be weighed. <coughs> and in this case, calculations are done in the same manner, whereby we don't know the mass of the two substances in the initial mixture, but we know the mass of the mixture. We we'll consider X to be the mass of the first substance and Y the mass of the second substance. And giving us X plus Y will give us the total mass of the mixture. We'll call that equation one. From there, we are going to establish the mass of each substance obtained from the, or the mass of the precipitate obtained from each substance. We'll start with the first one. What is the mass of sodium sulfate obtained from sodium chloride? It is the gravimetric factor times X, which is the mass of the sodium chloride. Yeah, and the mass of the second substance, which is potassium sulfate, is equal to the gravimetric factor of the sulfate times times y and when we perform that we will now calculate the mass of sulfate in both in both uh, substances giving us the mass of potassium sulfate in potassium chloride 
plus the mass of sodium sulfate is sodium chloride. We we'll call that equation two. <clears throat> and in conclusion, we we'll obtain two simultaneous equations where we are going to look for solve for x and y. When we now have either x, x and y, we when we have x. Knowing z, we can determine y. Or if you have y, knowing z, we can determine x. That is it. And at the end, we can derive as well the masses of the product that we isolated. That is sodium chloride and potassium, sodium sulfate and potassium sulfate. Summarily, my dear students, what are we saying? We are saying that if you have two substances, let me say A and B, that you want to analyze, and it is not possible to separate them, we will proceed by indirect gravimetric titration. And how is that done? The first thing is you will consider so these two will form a mixture called C. You consider X to be the mass of A. You consider Y to be the mass of B. And you consider Z to be the mass of the mixture C. It therefore means X plus Y will give Z. When this is done, you establish now, you determine the mass of each substance in the, in the mixture. For instance, what is the mass of Z in X? The mass here will be equal to the mass of Z. The mass of X in the mixture will be equal to the mass of the mixture times the gravimetric factor of X in the mixture. The mass of Y in the mixture will be the mass of the mixture times the gravimetric factor of Y in the mixture. When you have these two, you are not going to write them in, in the function of another. And at the end, you have a, 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 an equation that will permit you to determine the mass. Let's look at this exercise. The consolidation exercise. That will permit us to understand what we have said so far. Now, the exercise goes thus. As simple as you can see. Zero point six zero 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 gram of a sample. So here we will start by writing the data. They are giving us the mass of the sample, which is zero point six triple zero gram. And this sample contains, so it's a mixture containing silver chloride and silver bromide. And the sample is reduced to metallic silver. And of mass, they have given us the mass of silver to be 0 0.3714. Gram. What is therefore the first question? Calculate the mass of silver chloride and the mass of silver bromide in the sample. The second question, calculate the percentage weight weight of silver chloride and that of silver bromide in the sample. They have given us the various molar masses. The molar mass of the first of uh, silver chloride is equal to 143.32 gram and the molar mass 
of bromide group of silver bromide is 187.772 gram per mole. And the molar mass of silver is 107.868. In other books, you will see, they will tell you that the molar mass is 108. The first question we were asked to calculate the mass of silver chloride and silver bromide in the sample. What therefore are we going to do? We said that when we have a, a situation like this, the mass of the mixture will call in X, Z. We'll call here, this is Z. And we said let X be the mass of the first one, which is silver chloride. And let Y be the mass of silver bromide. And they ask us, these are the masses that they have asked us to calculate. At the end, we know that X plus Y must give us Z equation 1. That's the first thing we need to know. The second thing is that the mass of the, the, the next thing we need to know is the mass of silver in each sample. The mass of silver coming from silver chloride is equal to the mass of silver times the Gravimet uh, the mass of silver chloride times the gravimetric factor of silver in silver chloride. And what is the mass of silver chloride? We said the mass of silver chloride is x. So we have here x that the gravimetric factor of silver in silver chloride times x. We'll do the same thing. Do we know the gravimetric factor? Of course, the gravimetric factor can be calculated, which is the molar mass of silver divided by the molar mass of silver chloride times now the x that we have gotten. What is the molar mass of silver? It is 107.87 8 gram per mole divided by the mass, the molar mass of silver chloride. My dear student is what is the mass? 140, 143.32 gram per mole and times our x, which is the mass of the silver chloride. When you perform this, you are going to have the first, the next simultaneous equation. When you, pay, when you divide this two, you are going to have 0 0.7523x. So 0 0.7526x. Since it's a mass, the unit is gram. We are, we are writing the mass in function of x. We'll do the same thing, which I will not develop because it's the same principle. You will now do the same thing. The mass of silver in the second compound, which is silver bromide, is the gravimetric factor of silver in silver bromide times the mass of silver bromide. And we said that the mass of silver bromide is Y. And uh, making the, very, the necessary calculations, we are going to have the second equation, which is the mass of silver in silver bromide is equal to, after calculating this, we will now have 0 0.5745 y grams. Remember, it is not a real value, it is not the, the value. What do we now do after having that? We know that the mass, the total mass of silver that we have here, 
because this is the mass of the silver obtained after precipitation. This total mass of silver corresponds to the mass of silver obtained from silver chloride and the mass of silver obtained from silver bromide. It means that the mass of silver chloride equals to the sum of these two. 0 0.7526x plus 0 0.5745 you see that here we have the second simultaneous equation the second equation of two unknown remember here we have the first equation with x y and here we have the second equation with x and y as unknown when you now solve this simultaneous equation that you have here when you solve for x and for y in this simultaneous equation you are going to have x to be 0 0.1499 grams and you have y which is the mass of silver bromide to be 0 0.4501 gram so those are the various masses of the substances in the mixture now when you have the masses there are various masses you can of course calculate their percentage weight weight how do you do to calculate their percentage weight weight you take the mass of each sample divided by the to the mass of each substance in the sample divided by the total mass of the sample when you take the first case the percentage of silver chloride is the mass of silver chloride divided by the mass of the sample times 100 that will give you a percentage of 28 4.98 percent the percentage of silver bromide in the sample is its mass divided by the mass of the sample times 100 the numerical application will give a percentage of 75.02 percent so my dear students uh, we have come to the end of this teaching session and in our next class we are going to continue with the third part of this lesson, which is the application of direct gravimetry analysis. Manetambia niña ne injo biayen